Hello beautiful artists, welcome to a special holiday edition of my painting classes. My name is Gabe and I'll be your instructor for this evening and if you subscribe for all the evenings to come. This is the painting that we're going to be doing today. We're going to switch it up just a little bit because when I was doing this painting I was teaching a class and it was originally like a regular deer with like, you know, dead looking trees in the background and really dark colors. But they wanted to do a Christmas painting so I suggested we turn that painting into like a Christmas edition. So we have a reindeer, instead of the dead trees we have Christmas trees and then we have the snow and the stars. We're going to be using three brushes for this painting. First we're going to be starting off with this fat brush right here and this is of course Megatron. Next up we have this pointed tip brush right here and it's about an eighth of an inch thick and his name is of course Ignacio. And finally we have this small pointed detail brush and her name is Tinkerbell. These are the colors that we're going to be using today. We have true blue, black, white, and just a little bit of red. We're going to start off with Megatron, so let's go ahead and put them in the water cup, dry it off on the paper towel, and the first color we're going to be using is black. Let's start off by going to the corner of our painting, and we're going to go down maybe about 7 or 8 inches and just draw a little black dot right here. And then on the other side, I'm going to go down about seven or eight inches and make another black dot. And now let's find the center of our canvas. So just go exactly where you think the center of the canvas is and we're going to draw another little black dot. And now our job is to connect these black dots using a rounded line. And now everything above that line we can fill in with black. So we're just doing really, really wide horizontal brush strokes so we cover a large area quickly. And let's go ahead and paint the sides of the canvas too. So we're going to do the right side, the left side, and the top too. And the reason we paint the sides of the canvas is so when you hang it up on your wall it looks like a complete painting and you don't need to get a frame for it. Perfect, so we're just going to let that dry so let's wait about 12 years and then we'll come right back to it. Now that it's been 12 long and prosperous years, we're going to move on to the foreground of the painting. And for that, we are going to clean off Megatron. And the next color we're going to be using is blue. So go ahead and put Megatron inside the blue paint. And what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and do some more markings. So I'm going to do a little mark right here about 2 inches from the side of the canvas. And I'm going to match it over here about 2 inches on the side of the canvas. And now we're going to find the center of this space right here, right in the middle. We'll just put a little blue dot. And now our job is to connect these dots with a nice curved line. And now everything below that line, let's go ahead and fill it in with blue. And we want to do a curved brush stroke. We want to follow the shape of the curve that we naturally already have. So it's going to feel a little bit weird to do round curved brush strokes, but that's how we roll. Let's go ahead and take uh, our brush and just wipe it off on the side of the plate or the paper towel. Because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this technique called dry brushing. And that's when you have a really dry brush. And you just want to do like this wispy texture at the edge right here. So that hard line that we have separating the canvas from the blue we just did, we want to just get rid of it there. And we're ready to mix our next color. So for this next one, let's go ahead and take a scoop of this white paint and put it off to the side, wherever you have room. And then we're going to take a scoop of this blue paint and we're just going to mix the two colors together and make a, a nice light blue. And now with this color, I'm just going to take my brush and right over the part where I dry brushed it, I'm just going to introduce this color. And I'm just going to keep my brush moving back and forth like this. And I'm just going to slowly bring it down into the blue, going back and forth. And you'll see that it naturally just starts forming this beautiful gradient going from this light blue over to the darker one. And 
And we're just gonna go up a little bit more with this. Remember to keep your brush stroke nice and round. I'm painting the sides of the canvas as I go. All right, and we're just gonna stop about right here so we have just a few inches of white left above it. And now let's take just another scoop of this white paint. We're gonna make an even lighter light blue. So this is gonna be super duper baby blue. And now with this color, we can once again, just put it right over the part where we dry brushed it using our curved brush stroke. And then we're just gonna slowly bring it down into the other blue that we just made. And we wanna create another little gradient so it goes from dark blue, to light blue, to baby blue. All right, and now we're just gonna fill in the rest of this white area here with this baby blue. And let's go ahead and wrap the sides of the canvas with this color too. You kinda wanna do it as you go because it's gonna be hard to match up these blues later on. But if you do it as you go, you don't have to worry about it. So now with this, I'm just gonna trace my line right here. So let's just get as close as we can get with this brush here without going into the black. And I'm gonna have Ignacio report to duty. So we're gonna dip him inside the baby blue paint and then we can just trace this horizon line a little bit easier with Ignacio. And you wanna go with the brush stroke that we already had, so keep your Brush stroke nice and round. You want to keep it consistent. And I'll just finish off this side here. And then we're just going to go ahead and just paint this side over here. And now if you prefer the painting like this where it goes from dark to light, then you just follow these same steps but just do it backwards. So you start with the dark up here and then you slowly get lighter as you go down to the bottom. So now that we have the foreground in there, it's time to move on to the trees. And for that, we're gonna get Ignacio out. So let's go ahead and take Ignacio and put him inside the green paint. And with this green paint, we're just gonna start creating some of these trees here. So the, for the first tree, I'm gonna come about maybe an inch from the side, and probably two or three inches from the top. I'm gonna start my tree right here. So I'm just gonna kind of draw one side of the tree because I want to make sure that this tree is like triangle shaped and it's gonna constantly get wider as it goes. So I'm just gonna paint this side of the tree first, making sure that it stays in like a diagonal direction. And now I'll paint this side of the tree as well. And again, I'm drawing it diagonally because I want this tree to get fatter as it goes down. Fill in. And then for the bottom right here, we can just draw a couple little parts of the tree, just going right into the blue. And that's how we're gonna marry those pieces together. Now that we have that first tree, we're just gonna continue on. And this tree, comes over about maybe uh, two inches and it's about one third of the way down on the canvas. So I'm gonna start it right about here. And just like before, we're just gonna draw a diagonal line, make it end about right here. And then I'll just draw another diagonal line this way. But you see how I'm drawing the diagonal line with a series of little brush strokes like this? That's to create the end of the tree there. We can just fill in the tree from here. And now we'll just go ahead and paint this tree over here. All right, we have one more tree, so let's go down about two inches and over about two inches. And this tree's a lot thinner, so when I draw my diagonal line, I'm not really gonna come out that far. And then finally, we just have one more tree right here. It's nice and thin. I'm actually just gonna draw a line going down 
And then I'm just going to dress up this tree a little bit. Now that we have the trees on the right side, we can follow those same exact steps and we're going to mimic that same shape over here and make it kind of symmetrical. And now that we've made the middle part a little bit lighter, the snow here isn't going to contrast as much here, so we're just going to add a little bit of dark blue right in here where the deer is going to be snowing from. Just so when we put the snow there, the snow is going to pop out a lot more and you can see it better. So let's go ahead and wash off. And the next color that we're going to be using is pure blue. So it's the blue paint not mixed with anything. And then over here, we're just gonna create some blue dots. I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm literally just dabbing a couple blue dots right here. We're thinking ahead. This is gonna look a little bit goofy right now by itself, but it's gonna look really, really cool once we add the snow on top of it. So let's go ahead and clump up more of these blue dots here near the top. And as it gets closer to the bottom, we're gonna make them a little bit more farther away, a little bit more sparse. And now comes the part where things are gonna get messy. Let's go ahead and take Megatron. We're gonna clean him off completely. We don't want any black paint left on him because the next color we're gonna be using is pure white. Now we can go ahead and take Megatron and we're just gonna take a little scoop of this white paint and then put it off to the side where you have room. And we're just gonna grab some of this water and we're just really gonna dilute this white paint. We just wanna take this white paint and liquefy it and we're going to make it really liquidy, but not to the point where our brush is dripping. If your brush is dripping wet, that's too much, but we do want it quite watery. So the technique is we're just going to take our brush and we're just going to pull it back like this, about six inches away from the canvas. And we're just going to make a bunch of these little splatters all over the canvas. How much snow and stars you want to put on your canvas is totally up to you. I'm gonna put quite a lot because I, I want this to be really, really snowy. I'm kinda of in the mindset of the more snow and the more stars, the better. I'm gonna add a lot of snow, particularly to these corners right here, where the light blue is, just so they're not so plain. Add a little spice to their life. And I'm going to add a whole bunch right here in the bottom middle because all this snow is going to be falling somewhere and it's going to be accumulating all right there. And now we're beginning to have a winter wonderland. Aha! I just had some camera problems so I don't think it recorded the last maybe like two minutes of what I did here. But don't worry, I'm going to break it down, okay? What I did was I found the center of my canvas and then I went down about one third of the way down the canvas and aligned it up to this tree that I have right here. And I started right here and I made a straight line going down and connecting it to my horizon line, like this. And then from there, I just drew this circle at the top, so it looked like a lollipop. And then from there, I gave it a really, really thick neck. So it's a nice thick neck that connects over. And then I did the same thing over here. And now for his shoulders, it's gonna overlap this first tree right here. And his left shoulder is gonna sit a little bit higher than his right shoulder. So I'm gonna come and overlap this tree, but I'll make it connect a little bit lower. 
And then we can just trace this line right here and fill in everything with the white paint. And now that we have all three pieces in there, we can just adjust it accordingly. So I'm gonna make his neck a little bit thicker over here on the left side. And then I'll just make his head a little bit wider in general. And now we can move on to the antlers. Now you could use Ignacio or Tinkerbell for the, for the antlers, it's really up to you. But we're gonna go ahead and just draw this first main antler right here. So I'm just gonna put where I want the antlers to go on my deer, I'm gonna go right here and right here. And now let's go about one third of the way in from the canvas and down about one inch. I'm gonna just make a little dot right here. And now our job is to connect that dot with our antler here. So I'll just draw this, this basic shape. It's gonna come out this way. And it's gonna come way out here and just connect. So I'm just gonna work on making this antler thickest near the base and then it's gonna get thinner as it goes on. So these antlers start out about the thickness of Ignacio and then they end up being the thickness of little Tinkerbell. And now we're just gonna mimic that same shape. So I'm gonna come about one third of the way on this side of the canvas too which is about right here. And then we can just draw our shape here. So I'm gonna make it come out a little bit like this. And then just do your best to mimic that same shape on over to the other side. And then we can start drawing some more of these antlers. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm essentially going to make a Y shape out of my antlers that I have right here. And just like before, we really want these antlers to be the thickest at the base and then they're going to get thinner as they go out. So I'm just going to thicken up the base of this antler here a little bit. And now we'll just come right about right here and we'll connect another prong to the antler and this one's kind of just facing straight out. It's going to come out from the center of our antler and then it's going to curve up and just end right there. And just like before, we can go ahead and make this part of the antler thickest at the base. They're kind of like tree branches. And then this part of the antler just kind of shoots up here and connects to the beginning part right here. All right, so we can mimic this shape right here. And then this part's gonna come straight out and connect on over. We have another one that comes in. We'll make the base of this thicker again. And now finally, we're just gonna come over here and do this outer part right here. And we'll make sure it's coming out of the same spot right here. So we can go ahead and just give the whole deer a second coat so he pops out and he's really, really nice and white. And now we can start adding some of the snow that we have falling from the deer itself. So we still have Ignacio with white paint. And I'm just gonna go in and just dab a bunch of these white dots right here. And now just like before, we're gonna have these white dots be more present near the top part of the painting. And then they're gonna get more and more spread out as they go down. So the top part here, we're gonna go ahead and just put a nice amount
Now that we have the fallen snow in there, we can go ahead and do the ears. So for the ears, I'm gonna use Ignacio and some white paint. And I'm gonna come out this way, and I'm gonna push down very, very lightly because I wanna use the tip of Ignacio. And we're just gonna draw a teardrop shape. So we're just gonna draw a shape like this, make it hang down a little like that. We can use Tinkerbell here to make it come to a nice sharp point. And now we can go over here and just draw the other ear. So I'm gonna take Tinkerbell, come out this way and do another teardrop shape. Now our reindeer is really starting to come together. We're gonna let that dry for a little bit. We'll just go ahead and add some of this frost that's on top of the trees here. We can use a combination between Tinkerbell and Ignacio. So if you want thin lines of snow, use Tinkerbell. If you want thicker bunches of snow, you can go ahead and of course use Ignacio. And I'm just gonna trace some of these lines right here. We're just making some diagonal lines and I'm just adding snow here and there and just really brightening up these trees. That way they really contrast really well against the black sky. And now finally we can just finish up this painting by putting the little red nose right here. So we can go ahead and use Tito or Ignacio, whatever you're more comfortable with using. They will both work perfectly for this. So go ahead and put your brush into the red paint. And now this deer has a snout, so we're gonna go down here below his head. Just put a nice little red nose right here. And there we have it. That's all the steps that you need to know in order to paint this painting right here. You can go ahead and sign the painting on whatever corner that you'd like. This painting would be an awesome gift for a loved one for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever it is that you celebrate. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I have a bunch of other painting tutorials that you guys can check out. And if you guys like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing. And if you would like to see more of these classes, then consider going to my Patreon page and doing any kind of pledge because that will help me put more of these classes out there for you guys. Thank you guys again for joining me and until next time, stay creative.